Hey guys, we still doing vectors and here is the last problem that I considered in the previous video dedicated to variance involving vectors. So actually vector addition is the main focus of that topic. And here we go. We previously encountered with the case when the angle between two vectors are not is not actually 90 degrees. So you cannot form a right angle triangle in order to find D as displacement as you know as hypotenuse or just one leg using Pythagoras. So before we use this the cos rule, cos rule to how to find the side opposite to well-known angle and if you know two other sides. Okay, so here is the last problem. Hope you already did it. So so let's see. A ship traveling at 35 km per hour on the course 115 encounters the current of 5 km per hour in the direction 160. So you need to find the actual speed and direction of that ship. Alright, so first of all, we are going to set up um, the, starting, the starting velocity 35 km on a course 150. That's the velocity in calm water. So let's see how it works. So we set up in north direction as always. And now just doing by by eye or using protractor if you have this. So it's not necessary to use protractor, so you can estimate angle. So my estimation this is 90 degrees, so you can be 25 degrees behind 90, so it's gonna be somewhere here okay that's around 115 115 degrees okay that's the variance of velocity in calm water but now that's there is the current of drift so of five kilometers so we set up 35 kilometers here per hour and then in the ending point, so we set up five kilometers in the direction 160. So that's why we set up again north direction as in previous task. So, and right now what we're gonna do, we, we need to measure 160. So 160, where is this angle? So 160 is 20 degrees before 80. Okay, B before 180. So I bet that this direction is going to be somewhere here. Okay, let's say this is five kilometers per hour with with the bearings of 160. Okay, find the actual speed and direction of the ship. So what we're we going to do? What we're we going to do? Let's see. Okay. Yeah, I guess I've got it. So that's the north direction. So that's another vector. So we are actual speed. So I will use the blue one and the resulting speed is going to be a superposition of what you have for 35 and 5 together. So I just set up This vector, which is blue one, is the resultant. Okay, so this is the resultant vector, and this is the actual speed. So I put actual ACT as the actual speed. So typically, if we want to find this V actual, we need to use vector addition for 35 and 5. So I put 35 vector and add 5. On top of that so that's going to be the resultant velocity and resultant speed so that's why we need to find the actual speed and direction okay so first of all we need to determine the angle somehow we need to determine the angle so again the key indicator here is to use north direction as oops as two parallel lines right so that's the first line okay and we use the same here 
that's another line that goes down so right now we are going to find the angle ideally is to find the angle between 35 and 5 so that one that one okay but let's see right now if we use two parallel lines and as normally we used a and point B here so we can use the angle uh, we can use AB as the second line so and two parallel lines will give us this angle to be 115 right so that's angle 115 degrees also so okay how to figure out the angle between vectors so we need this extra right so we need this extra and because the total like line is simply open angle around the point B so it consists of let's put x degrees here so we know that x degrees plus 160 is actually should be op an open angle so we've got x from here 20 degrees as I said when I dictate the conditions for the problem so x from here 20 degrees so we know that this x is 20 degrees and now we know the complete angle between segment a b or the vector 35 and the vector 5 okay so we know that the total angle is 115 degrees and 20 together so this angle 135 the angle between AB, basically AB vector, so that part and that part and the vector 5, so and the vector 5, or you can use numbers if you like, 35 and 5, so oops, so 5 as the vector, yeah. So we've got this angle, it's obtuse, but it doesn't matter we can set up the cost rule anyway we can set up the cost rule let's set it up and see how it works so we need to find the actual as simply squared is a b squared so we use the cost rule i just show you that's c let's say we've got a b squared plus b c squared minus 2 times AB times BC and times by the cos of the angle between them. In our case, angle is 135 degrees, so we've got 135. And be careful, guys, for that value, cos is going to be negative, okay? If you press calculator and calculate this angle, so you should get the negative value. So let's see. So cos of 135. Yeah, you'll get negative 0 0.71 to two decimal places. So what it means, actually, if you apply unit circle, everything's clear. So but for GCC program, program, it's not necessarily needed. So it's higher level stuff. So make sure you understand that cos value for angles for obtuse angles up to 180 degrees and actually up to 270 gives you negative values okay for sine doesn't occur so for sine up to 180 you have positive values okay so let's get and calculate v actual so v actual is simply a b squared so we just plug the value 35 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 35 times 5 and times okay I just duplicate that 135 degrees and cos of that value so that's the actual oops yeah it's v squared so that's the actual speed value so it's not velocity yet it's just only the value the length of the velocity vector and now let's just try to calculate in row so we've got that, so square root of 35 squared, then 25, then minus 2 times, so 10 times, 
35 and times cos of the negative of obtuse angle 35 degrees so what I've got I've got the value of actual speed 38.697 so so roughly it's about 70 kilometers per hour that's the resultant vector and indeed if you have a look at the picture so this part and on top of that you have the current actually it's not against the initial motion right of the of the boat or the ship so that means the result vector should be more and actually using this triangle so because this angle is an obtuse so the total angle is I don't know obtuse 135 degrees so that is going to be the longest side so that the longest so then the longest side as, as it should be okay and the value for that is 38.7 all right, so guys, now direction of the ship. So what we need to measure. So we need to measure, not the measure, but to find out the angle. So if we're looking for the bearings, so we need to know that small angle in order to add with 115 degrees to get the bearings for our vector velocity, for actual velocity. So let's set up this angle as y. So, and we can state that the bearings, so the bearings of vector V actual is going to be 115 degrees plus the vector, plus uh, Y angle. So the, the last goal is to define Y vector. Okay, so how to work it out. Mm, actually, we can use sine rule, yeah. Yeah, we can. So because it seems to me there is no way, there is no other way to find it. Okay, so I'm not gonna waste my time. So I'll just use sine ratios. So sine rule. If you know, just drop the comments. If you know how to do it fastly. So right now I cannot see that at the moment. So I will use a sine rule for the triangle as we did before so one more time sine rule is simply you take in the side relate to the angle to the side of this angle and this ratio will be constant along the similar ratio so I'll show you so you consider triangle ABC so for triangle ABC and here we just simply set up the rule for a sign so what do we have what do we have? We've got angle 115 and angle X in total, it's 20. So we've got 135 angle, which is here. Okay. That angle is 135. So we've got uh, V actual to sine of 135 degrees. And that will be equal to, we're taking five kilometers per hour and relate to this small angle y that we're looking for, for the sign of angle y, okay? So we know actual velocity, so actually we've got actual speed, it's 38.7, so we can set up this value here, 38.70, and from where we can find sine y. As, you, as I told you before, sine up to 180 gives you positive value, so that's okay, because angle Y is definitely acute and sine value of Y is gonna be also positive. So now we just need to resolve this proportion, crisscross multiply. And sine, I'll swap, sine of Y, I'll swap with this value. So finally, what I've got, sine Y is simply five times sine 135 if you want to you can calculate it in advance it so in 38.70 okay that's the final value so let's calculate that as the fraction so five times so sine of 135 degrees and over 38.70 
So I've got very, very small value, and that means the angle itself is going to be also small. So that's the value to 3dp. So from where y is simply sine minus 1 of that. Okay. So I've got that angle y is 5.24 degrees. So that means that small angle is y, which is 5.24. So from where I can figure out the value for the bearings. So the total bearings is 115 plus y. So what I've got bearings of the actual is going to be 120 and 0.24 degrees from the north direction. So basically, I just put the red. What we found, we found that variance. Okay. So guys, that's the end. I think that's complete manual how to solve variance problems involving vector addition. Actually, it's not the end. I mean, we also can do some bearing problems with subtraction and this is the following topic on, in my videos so actually guys keep on track and if you cover all that in proper manner I guarantee that you will get well prepared for your GCC exam so you'll get A star definitely without any doubt so if you covered all revision and self-practicing as well self-practicing is really necessary that was Daniel Dallas, and peace out.